Hello friends, Facebook friends and, and YouTube uh, uh, members and uh, Twitter followers and all the others out there. I'm sure glad you've tuned in today to Mid-Morning Manna coming to you Monday through Friday. On behalf of North Harrison Baptist Church, Lonnie Mattingly here, and I'm delighted that you tuned in. And I want you to stay tuned today. I've got a very important subject that I want to talk about. You hear a lot today about good works and standards and legalism and what's right and what's wrong and nobody's going to tell me what to do and all, all, the, all those kind of things. Now, I just want to deal with that a little bit this week as I talk about the value of good works. I'm going to move to the pulpit here now and uh, we'll jump right in. All right. Take your Bibles this uh, this evening and or this morning that is and turn to I'm, I'm at the church recording and it's almost evening so I get confused there a little bit but on this Monday morning of North Harrison Baptist Church on Facebook Live with Mid-Morning Manna. Take your Bible and turn to Titus chapter 3, verse 8. Titus chapter 3, verse number 8. I want you to see this as we think about are good works really necessary? Do people have to have standards of conduct and actions in their life if God's going to use them in a great way? Or is that just legalism and uh, that sort of thing? In Titus chapter 3, verse number 8, the Bible says, This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto all men. Now, you know what? You ought to write that verse down. You ought to work on memorizing it. You ought to meditate on it just a little while. And you ought to say, Lord, what does that verse mean to me? As I take the Bible as a whole, as I, take, as I look into the Word of God, what does that mean to me? When it talks about the good works and how it's profitable, if it's profitable, would it be then on the other side, on the contrary? Would it be unprofitable? Would it be something that would keep me from having the power of God on my life if I ignored those good works, if I ignored being obedient, if, if I ignored looking to the word of God for instruction and help and discipline in my life? I don't know. You know, folks, uh, it's just amazing how people want to justify their compromise. That's what it really boils down to. They want to say, yeah, I know what the Bible says, but here's how I apply it. Instead of applying it, why not just believe it? Why not just, why, why don't, instead of making some sliding application that'll fit in one, whatever situation you're in, how about just saying, thus saith the Lord, and that's where we're going to live. I remember back when I was working for IBM, the guys on Friday always said, come on, Lonnie, let's go. Let's go over. We're, we're going to meet over here at Joe's Bar or some, some bar. And we just uh, have a couple beers just to relax and all the pressure of the week. And I said, no, I'm not going. They said, well, what's the matter? You don't like us? You're, I said, oh, I, I love you. You're great friends. I appreciate you. I've learned a great deal from you. And uh, you've been very helpful to me. But I'm a Christian, and I just don't go to places like that. And I don't drink. And, and oh, you're just one of them legalist. Oh yeah, well I guess I am. I'm a legal follow the law of God. I, I think that's a good idea. Not in order to go to heaven. I'm not, to, I'm not talking about how to get saved. I'm talking about how to please God, how to have the power of God on your life. And good works are necessary for that. I've talked to people who say, well, I, I can't go to one of those fundamental churches. I, I got to go over here to this church that's a little bit looser. That's, they didn't use that term exactly, but that's what they meant. I go to this church that's a little bit looser, a little bit more contemporary. They sort of do their own thing, come as you are, leave as you came, that, that kind of stuff. And that's not, that's not what I believe God called me to do. If I was going to do that, oh, then I would go ahead and stay working for IBM and just try to be a good Christian and live to what, any way I wanted to. But the truth is, God called me. When he called me, he called me to preach the truth of God's word as it is to men as they are and let the chips fall where they will. And that's what we try to do. And so this is such an important thing. Uh, let me just say this. Good works, number one, you think about good works. Uh, good works make us useful. Uh, and usefulness is the, the rent which is due for being allowed to live in this world and serve Almighty God. Some of us may be behind in our rent payment, by the way. Let us 
Examine the place of good works in the life of believers. I'm going to give you several points this week. I'm going to try to uh, give you one, maybe two a day. And I believe it will help you if you'll tune in, if you'll write down the scripture references, if you'll look at them, read them honestly, apply them to your life, and let God be the, uh, be the one in charge. And don't call God a legalist because he asks you to do certain things certain ways, his way. And you, you say, well, it's my way or the highway. Well, how about God's way to get the blessing of God on your life? Good works do make us useful. Number one, good works were performed by Jesus Christ. He's our example. Jesus performed good works. He said, I always do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Oh, Jesus must have been a legalist. He just, whatever God said, that's what he did. He took, he, he, he just didn't do his own thing and say, I'm going to go off on my own way, do my own thing. Nobody's going to tell me what to do because, you know, I have my own personal walk with God and I'm going to do it my way. Hold on, time out. My friend, that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, I always do his will. I want to please him. And in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, the Bible says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Now, I'm not Jesus Christ. I'm not ever uh, in, in this life going to be able to perform those kind of miracles. But I do know this. I know I want God with me. Wherever I go, when I represent him, I want him right there with me. And in order for that to happen, I've got to have good works. I, when God tells me to do a certain work a certain way uh, or to live in a certain manner or, or to uh, have a certain type of respect for him and for his word, uh, when he gives specific things like talking about men's hair or talking about ladies' dress or talking about whatever it is, if God said it, I believe it, it's settled as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to take God at his word. Ladies and gentlemen, you tell me what's wrong with that. Put it in the comment section. I'd like to hear it because our, our nation is going to hell in a handbasket and we're compromising on every front. Christians have lost their boldness because they've lost the power of God because they're doing their own thing and trying to get God to approve of it. Uh, they say, well, I'll do this and see if God will, will approve that. No, that's not the thing. It, this is, we're, we're not just a commercial enterprise that's advertising, trying to build a crowd. We are, the, we are the people of God trying to keep people out of hell, trying to reach people with the gospel, trying to touch lives. Well, that's enough for today. Good works were performed by Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, and for God was with him. I want God with me. I want God with you in your endeavors to serve him. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the joy of serving Jesus. I pray your Holy Spirit will just breathe on us and work in us. And I pray that we will have a strong desire to have good works in our life. And the good works are the God works, the things you have told us to do. Lord, help us to be committed to them. In Jesus' name, amen. What glory awaits me in heaven's bright city when I get there what sights I'll behold a million scenes of rare beauty will demand that I view them but Jesus will outshine them all mansions will glisten on the hill To that city's perfection, oh, but